Hi class, today we are on Saxon Book 4, Lesson 71, and we are talking about division answers that end with zero. So we are going to get a whole bunch more practice today doing long division, and we're going to talk about the importance of the place value and where we write our answers. So let's start with 200 pennies were divided in, oh, we're separated into four equal piles. How many pennies are in each pile? So here's my 200 pennies. They were separated into four piles. So what I have taught you before is we start by saying, can four go into two? Can we take those two hundreds and divide them into four groups? No, we don't have enough hundreds. So I tell you to put an X here. The reason I want you to do that is because our answer is not going to have a digit in the hundreds place. Our answer is going to be smaller than 100. And I want to keep everything lined up with their place values. Remember, this is hundreds, this is tens, this is ones. So since we are not going to have a digit in the hundreds place, we don't want to write any number above that two. So then our next question, we were like, we had two hundreds, we couldn't divide the two hundreds. But we can trade in those hundreds for tens. And for every hundred, we are going to get ten tens. So if we have two hundreds, we can trade it in for twenty tens. So now with those twenty tens, can I put them into four groups? I sure can. And how many would be in each group? we would have five, five tens in each of our four groups. So our next step was to multiply because what we're doing here is we're saying, well, how many of those 20 tens am I using up? If I have 20 tens and I'm splitting them up into four groups, do I use all of them? Do I only use some of them? How many have I used? Five times four? gives me 20, so I can see I used all 20 of them. Then we want to subtract. In this case, we get 0, and that's fine. In some other situations, this number is bigger than this number, so we have some leftover 10s down here. Then we drop our 1s. Again, in this case, it's 0. It's nothing. We drop our 1s, and we say, how many ones would go in each of those four groups? None. So here's what's really important and why it's really important to put your numbers in the correct place value there. I have five tens here. My answer is not five. Five times four is not equal to 200. I have to say, how many groups of four can I make or how many would be in each group? If I had zero, I have to say zero, and then I have to fill that in up here in my answer. I can't just leave it blank because five is very different from 50, okay? So we'd have 50 pennies in each group. All right, we're going to try that with another example. In this case, we have 121 divided by 3. So, can 3 go into 1? No, it can't. We'll put our x there over the hundreds. Can 3 go into 12? Yes. How many times? 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. I subtract. I get zero, and now I'm going to drop my one. Can three go into one? No, I don't have enough ones. So three goes into one zero times. We have to write the zero up here, and then we multiply. Three times zero is zero. We subtract. 
oh, sorry, you can't see that. We subtract, and now you have a remainder. So our answer is 40 remainder 1. Again, that's very different from 4 remainder 1. So when you write your answer here in the tens place value, you need to make sure that you fill a 0 into the 1s if you can't divide down here. If this number is too small and we just have a remainder, that's fine, but you have to make sure you fill in that zero there. You say, oh, I can't divide one by three, so we fill in a zero. All right, next example, Mr. Griffith drove 254 miles in five hours. They want to know about how many miles did he drive each hour. So this is what the problem looks like. But remember, that was an about. An about problem means we're going to change this number so that it can easily divide by 5. What does a number end in that can be divisible by 5? It'll end in either 0 or 5. So this one ends in a 4. Am I going to change that to a 0 or should I change it to a 5? I want to change it to a 5 because 255 is a lot closer to my original number than 250. Okay? And then we're going to divide. 5 can't go into 2. How many times does 5 go into 25? 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. We get 0. We drop our 5. How many times does 5 go into 5? One time, and I don't even have to finish that because I know that it goes exactly one time. If I multiply and subtract, I'm going to end up with no remainder. So about 51 miles each hour is what he traveled. All right, boys and girls, the next item on the agenda is your lesson practice. So I would like for you to do A through G in the lesson practice. Have your answers ready for when I see you in class. If you are not my in-class student, check your answers with your homeschool parent so that you make sure you're doing it correct. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that I will see you again soon.